Hello, I am Lars with the uh, Arix hooks. One of the most uh, popular uh, types of uh, fly for imitating mayflies uh, on the surface is uh, a parachute fly. They are quite easy to tie, uh, they're fast. Um, when I tie this, I'm just going to focus a little bit of a trick uh, that you need to be aware of uh, when you turn the hackle or indeed any kind of hackle on a dry fly. Um, they float very well because of the horizontal uh, hackle. Um, they produce a very believable footprint, so in fact uh, they provide everything that you want from a dry mayfly imitation. Let's have a look. I will tie this one uh, on an Arex 501 in size 12. So, as far as imitation goes, this could be uh, an imitation of uh, the large dark olives in spring. But of course, you can tie this uh, type of fly in, in any color, any size, uh, to match, match the hatch. Uh, I tie parachute flights all the way down to a size 18, maybe even a 20. So, I begin with the thread, come down to about the halfway point with the hook shank and then I come forward leaving about a quarter of a hook shank length that length may be a little less for the wing I like to use a standard poly yarn uh, this is of course uh, way too much um, I use maybe a third of that I have just this piece that I've combed out uh, and I'm going to use about half of this. I've already tied one fly with this, so this is about a third of the thickness of, a, of the poly yarn. I tie this in uh, on top of the hook shank, roughly in the middle, it doesn't matter much. Then three or four turns at full thread tension, I lift up and then I come around the base all the way down towards the hook shank. Three or four times and this consolidates uh, the wing on top of the shank. Now I just slowly move up the wing. I want room for about three turns of hackle and no more, so you don't need to come up very far. I'm using a uh, nice uh, genetic hackles from uh, Whiting. Um, so you can actually tie maybe two, three flies, and I've already tied uh, one fly with this. So I'll just continue with this. Let's just shorten this part a little bit. And let's tie this down on top of the hook shank in front of the, the wing. And now I lift it up and tie it up along the, the posted um, poly yarn. And um, an important uh, little trick, which I'll show you uh, a little bit more about in a second is to make sure that you have a little bit of naked stem uh, over uh, the last turn of uh, tying thread so to speak and I'll show you why in a second so just come up uh, about I don't know two or three turns is enough uh, and end with the tying thread uh, behind the wing Let's have a little look at uh, this little trick um, when tying a uh, dry fly hackles. So I'll just uh, put in a half hitch and I'll put in a new hook. Once again, just a size 12. And I'll just go back here. I'll just take a slightly larger hackle, making it easier for you to see what's happening.
Now, if I tie this feather in and come back with the tying thread so that the tying thread butts up against the very first or very lowest hackle fibers. You can see that as I start turning the hackle, you'll always get some fibers sticking out backwards, which doesn't look very nice, doesn't really matter uh, as such, but it doesn't look very nice on the finished fly. So let me just tie that off quickly. Cut off the feather and I'll just move this one to the very front of the hook. And I just use the same hackle and I'll strip a little bit of, of the barbs off. And now instead, when I tie this in, instead of coming all the way back to the first or lowest barbs, as you can see, I've left just a little bit of uh, bare hackle stem. Now as I fold this around and start turning, you'll see that the very, very first fibers actually come out sticking up or out at a nice 90 degree angle from the hook shank. And I do that on a parachute fly, to fly as well, so that I make sure that just a little bit of naked or bare stem is above the last turn of tying thread as I post up the hackle, so that as I start turning it, I don't have hackle fibers sticking up into the wing. And this, of course, goes for any type of dry fly that you're tying. So back to the fly I started tying before. And as I said, I end with the tying thread behind the wing post. So that's where I'll just attach it again. Now just a quick base of tying thread, almost down to the bend. And I've just picked uh, one of the large feathers from the from the back of the cape, uh, the ones that are so big that you rarely use them, uh, at least for dry flies. And uh, pull back on the fibers so they stick out uh, at 90 degrees from the stem. Pull off a small bunch. Ah, that was a little bit too little. So you see I have uh, the end of the barbs nicely aligned. I just squeeze them together with my right hand. How long you want your fibers is of course up to yourself. I don't tie them particularly long. Just tie these in. And um, we'll finish off with a single turn of tying thread underneath the, the fibers, which will just kick them up just a little bit. As I said, this could be an imitation of a large dark olive, so they are. I use a fairly dark olive dubbing. And as you undoubtedly know, mayflies are fairly slender, so I take care not to use too much dubbing. And take care when you start the dubbing that you don't upset uh, the tails. Just move forward slowly, building up the body. If you can, try and taper it a little bit. I'm just going to put on a tiny bit more dubbing because I want to end with the dubbing just in front of the wing, just like that. And now I grab the hackle with my hackle pliers and I try to make sure that I turn the hackle with the shiny side downwards so I don't end up with the hackle fibers curving downwards a little bit, but instead actually maybe curving a little bit upwards or at least horizontally. I don't use uh, particularly many turns typically use three 
and make sure that each turn comes below the one before it. That's three turns. The reason I don't use uh, more turns is that I don't want to obscure the fish's view of the wing. And really it's only the last or maybe the two last turns that are in contact with the water. So whatever you have above that, above that uh, doesn't really make a difference in, in terms of uh, floatability. I just grab everything here, stroke it back and secure the hackle. Cut it off and you're bound to catch uh, some fibers every now and then. So just use your scissors and clean up the fibers you may have caught. Sometimes you don't catch anything, other times you will catch some. All that remains now is to dot the thorax. And I use just a little bit of dubbing. Once again, I stroke back. And even that was too much, but just get it off the thread, sort of tie it down, stroke that back. Don't drop your whip finish, two, two or three turns. And I had a little bit of dubbing on the thread. It's okay. And now pull the wing forward again. Just have a little bit of tidying up on the hackle. All that remains now is to cut the wing to the correct height, which is maybe just a little bit longer than, than the body. You can always cut it a bit too long and then shorten it down. That's it really. If you want, you can shape the wing, but I rarely, rarely bother with that. That's it. Uh, a good, effective, easy to tie parachute. Thanks for watching.